Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new season of the Purposeful Life Show with your host, Adrian Starks. I'm excited to share some new updates of the show with you, starting with a new look, sound, and energy, as well as a variety of guests coming aboard with intriguing topics of conversation. I hope you enjoy the new level of energy that will be brought to the show. Thank you for all of your support since the very beginning in 2019. Wow, it's been three years already? (laughs) Because of you, the Purposeful Life Show is now in the top 5% of all podcasts globally, and we aim to get it into the top 1%. Continue listening to the show and share it with others. You can also now listen to the show on my Facebook page at Adrian Starks, where you can comment in real time and communicate with me about your aha moments. Thank you again for all of your support. And let's make this one hell of a year and be purposeful about doing that. Wishing you all much love and success. How? wasn't my, wasn't my responsibility. The what is my responsibility, but that's kind of what I say. Like the three steps to success is knowing what you want, knowing where you are, and then creating the plan to bridge that gap. Welcome to the Purposeful Life Show on the Connect Now podcast with your host, Adrian Starks. If you're looking for the ideas that could be your breakthrough for change in your business, career, or personal life, then this podcast is for you. Join Adrian as he speaks on topics of personal and professional development for the person behind the business and interviews a variety of entrepreneurs, business owners, and thought leaders to reveal their ideas and solutions to success and its challenges. Subscribe to the show and leave us a review. It's time to connect, learn, and grow. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Purposeful Life Show on the Connect Now podcast with your host, Adrian Starks, and we are ready to get another amazing episode on the show. We have an amazing guest today. Her name is Kylie Paul. And before we get started, I want to make sure you go ahead and download this podcast onto your favorite podcast platform, subscribe to the show, and leave us a review. Now, let's get into this guest, Kylie Paul, today. And I'm excited because we're going to talk about vision planning. And I know a lot of us right now, we got some blurred visions going on, especially what's going on outside of ourselves in the world. But Kylie is going to bring us back to that center part of ourselves and help us get focused again. So let's talk about Kylie. Kylie's mission is to empower everyone around her by activating their awareness and giving effective tools to create and enjoy their ideal lives. As a single mom of two little boys who owns and is acting CEO of three companies, her schedule and lifestyle became more demanding. In response, she developed efficient strategies to maximize her time, organization, and execution in life and business. Throughout the last seven years, Kylie dedicated much of her time to developing her entrepreneurial acumen and overall clarity in achieving her purpose. I like that. She reads a book every week. Oh, we have to talk about that. Okay, let me go back to the bio. She reads a book every week and is devoted to mastery in every area of her life, health, wealth, and love. Kylie uses her platform as a mentor to share everything she learns and turns lessons into tangible systems hmm, that everyone can easily implement and take advantage of. Welcome to the show, Kylie. Ooh, I feel like I need a drum roll after that amazing bio. Thank you. (laughs) Well, hey, thank you for being on the show. And I'm excited to talk to you. And you can see me getting excited about the bio. I'm like, okay, we got to ask this question. I'm like, well, well, hold on for a second, Adrian. Get through the bio first. Let the audience listen to this. (laughs) So now that we're through that bio, let's get to know who you are, Kylie. Uh, You're a mother of two, and you run three successful businesses as a CEO and entrepreneur. Of course, I, as well as my audience, is wondering, how in the world are you pulling that off? Because running one business is hard enough, but I think I know why. You specialize in time management and vision planning, and we'll get into that vision planning piece a little bit later. Kylie, What brought you onto this journey of being a successful entrepreneur that is an active CEO of three companies? Thank you so much. Uh, So that's probably the number one question, actually, I get asked is how do I do everything? Because people know that I'm a single mom and my kids are little. So um, this COVID like was real for me. (laughs) The lockdowns, Mm -hmm. the school shutdowns. (laughs) My boys are five and seven. So last year they were four and six and it was tough. Um, But 
yeah, planning basically got me got me through it and gets me through every day. I scheduled every 30 minutes of my life, essentially, which sounds crazy probably to some people, but I also do have a lot of flex time. Uh, but yeah. how I got into my entrepreneurial journey, honestly, I think it was, and I'm probably most entrepreneurs say this, is always in me. Um, I grew up in a small farm town community where, which was great environment to grow up and, and safe and, and all of that, but I didn't have anyone in my environment to recognize my entrepreneurial qualities or, or things that were going on with me. You know what I mean? When I was a child, mm-hmm. even though I was making businesses, I was always the leader of the group <laughs> and, and all these things, but no one in my environment could see that. None of the teachers or family members or anything. So I think I've always had it in me, but it wasn't express and I wasn't able to express it fully until I started my own company. So I kind of followed the traditional path. I mean, I went to university, I did postgrad, so I have two science degrees. I went into my career, you know what I mean, in corporate. Mm -hmm. And then kind of after my first um, maternity leave, I came back to a company that had actually recently been acquired. So I came back to a different corporate culture. And then I was questioning a lot of things at that time, my own personal development, my own personal happiness, navigating Mm. being a new mom and being a professional. How do I make all this happen? And I was actually given the opportunity by a former executive to start my own consulting company. And at the time, as I was learning more about myself and what was driving me and and I wasn't being challenged in the ways that I knew that I could could be and could um, really grow and thrive in, I was like, maybe it is the right time to kind of make that leap. So I did a little market research at the time and got a couple clients right off the bat and then Mm -hmm. dove into business education. I mean, headfirst because I was coming straight (laughs) from a science background. I'm like the classic science geek to entrepreneur. I knew nothing (laughs) about business. Like, and people are probably thinking, ah, she probably knew something. She was smart, blah, blah. She was, you know, no, I knew absolutely nothing. I could tell you nothing about finance. I didn't know any business terminology. I hadn't, I didn't even know where the business classes were at Carleton, like literally, (laughs) literally nothing about business, but I found it and started learning and, and knew kind of immediately that this is where my talents and where my internal strengths are going to shine best. I love it. What a great story because I always, I'm interested in how people got started because we always hear about the success. But it's important to know about the journey because that is part of your success. And so it took you seven years to get out to where you are and to achieve overall clarity in your purpose. And I like this because there's so many people, Kylie, that they still don't know their purpose. And and for some, it'll take them a lifetime to figure that out. What is your purpose? My purpose is to mentor and motivate and to share my story, I think, and and to okay. empower those who resonate with my story, whatever piece of it that might be, whether it's the single moms and entrepreneurs out there, whether it's business owners that feel like they're they're struggling and need to kind of wind back a little bit to go forward and, and get back on track into where they're going or or people that are ready to either start a business or get their life back on track. I had to take back control of my life in every area after um, getting separated and and learning how to navigate kind of everything on my own in a different way. You know, I I Mm -hmm. had the business, two of the businesses at that point, but wasn't navigating them the same way as I am now, you know, (laughs) completely on my own and and having every aspect of, of my life kind of on the same tracks, basically. Well, I love your purpose because I spent a long time trying to figure out my purpose. And I realized that when we become purposeful towards life, then actually that purpose kind of unfolds itself. And speaking of becoming purposeful, that's why you're on this show, the Purposeful Life Show. What's so interesting is that you talk about vision and planning. And this is how we can become more purposeful in what we're doing out here. And you wouldn't be where you are today without that, running these three businesses successfully and being also a great kick butt mom along the way. And I love your energy because a lot of people complain about a lack of this and that. I call these the if people, Kylie. If I only had more time, if I only had more money, if I had these resources, and we're saying yes, if, if, if. How important is it to have a clear vision about what you want to be, achieve, and do? I mean, 
Clarity is confidence. You know, that's kind of what I say. A lot of people ask, like, you can feel my energy when I'm live mm-hmm. and in person, you know what I mean? And and recording and on all these things. And people ask how that happens. Oh, you're so confident in what you do. I said, well, I'm really clear on what it is that I'm saying. And that's where that confidence comes from. I'm not going to talk about something that I have no idea about. Like, I'm not, don't claim to be a soccer expert or So like a million things I know nothing about, but what I specialize in, what's my strength and my area of genius, that's, that's where I shine because I'm very clear about it. And I spend a lot of time dedicated to that, you know, and, and when you talk about the, if people, I did a kind of a detox of my environment, let's say uh, many years ago and made sure that people knew when they were interacting with me that I don't accept excuses. So that goes mm-hmm. with my staff, that goes with family, that goes with friends, anything around me. So if they start one of those sentences, if this, if that, I'm like, well, how can you achieve that? What are, what, yeah. where, where are the possibilities where that can happen? And I, you know what I mean? And if they're not, mm-hmm. a lot of them aren't willing to switch Uh, the flip the switch for that mindset, which is fine. Then I end the conversation because I'm not willing to engage and support somebody's excuses and negative thought wheels, you know, and, and all of that, because that affects my environment and that I keep very, very close to me and very important to me. You know, I want to keep that, um, my thoughts and my mindset very purposeful. Yes. on track with what I'm trying to do. Now, it's not perfect all the time, of course, <laughs> but to the extent that I can not. control it, you know, mm-hmm. I, I try to do that. I love that. You know, and see, you and I, we're already clicking here. And this is why I knew this was going to be a fun show, because I am that person too. You come around me saying, if only this, if that, and you're not really trying to make something happen or create something. That's an excuse to me. And if you're going to do that, please go to the other side. I don't have time for that. No, I don't have time for it. (laughs) Because we're trying to get things done out here. And that's why I love that energy about you. Speaking of that kind of challenge that people face when dealing with the if people, what is one of the more pressing challenges that you find through coaching that business owners and leaders have? So a recurring theme that I've seen and the reason why I kind of chose the vision planning platform and it fit really well with everything that I was doing is... I, so I've been coaching entrepreneurs for years in different ways um, and, and mentoring my local community with small businesses and startups and at kind of all different stages. And they'll present a problem or what they think is a problem. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. oh, I need help with marketing. I need help with closing sales. I need help with this and that. And I kind of peel it back a little bit. And I'm like, ask them questions, you know, about their vision their strategic planning, their, mm-hmm. their, um, like, have they written down their procedures? A lot of fundamental questions that they can't answer. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, do you have your plan written down for your business? Like where, what is your goal for your marketing? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily that the marketing isn't working. It's that you don't have an end target that you want it to hit. You haven't defined what your vision is for that specific department or area of your business. And they don't have that whole picture in order to kind of create the path to get there. So a lot of people are doing actions. And I think this is true at every level too. So Mm -hmm. this is true for startups. This is true for people that have been in business for five to 10 years. This is true for people, leaders that have been in business for 30 years. You know, they don't, they're, they're doing actions because we're taught actions equals productivity But if you're doing actions for the sake of doing actions, you're essentially in a hamster wheel and you're not going anywhere. So if you take a step off the hamster wheel, take a look around, you know, and decide (laughs) where you want to go, where this is going, and then create the path to get there, that's when you're going to see the forward progression and the steps forward. Oh, I love that perspective on the hamster wheel. So for the leaders listening today, business owners, entrepreneurs, Get off the hamster wheel, okay? It's time to get off the hamster wheel and look at what you're doing. And this was one of the big mistakes I made. When I first started in business, I just wanted to be have a successful business. That's what most people say. Oh, what do you want? I want a successful business. I want clients. I want this. I want that. But it's like, do you actually have a plan? And I think this is where a lot of people make huge mistakes. Kylie, what has been one of your greater challenges in building your business and ideal life? So- A lot, I mean, I've faced a million challenges, especially being like 
the greenest entrepreneur maybe on the planet <laughs> starting <laughs> my business. Um, I just want to make one short comment going back to the ha- hamster wheel. So when we're taking actions from a clouded mindset or mm-hmm. an overwhelmed mindset or um, a scattered mindset, we're not taking actions that are going to get us the outcome that we're expecting. So taking a step back and getting into the right mindset before taking an action, it might actually bring up a new action. You get a new idea that makes more sense for the direction that you're trying to go. So that's one of the biggest things that I've learned is to not just take action because I think I have to take action, but making sure I'm in the right mind frame to do that action and I'm not doing it from, I don't know, a negative place, let's say as a, as a frame of reference, but from a positive productive place where I can see where I'm going and then a, maybe a different action or a different idea will come up a new aligned action that will actually get me there faster Mm -hmm. (laughs) instead of taking 10 steps in a negative mindset. Maybe it only takes one step in the right mindset to get me where I want to, uh, to go. Um, Okay. Sorry, can you repeat the question now that I've went on on that tangent? <laughs> you know, I forgot the question. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, I suppose I should know these questions. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, no, I like what you said, Maybe. though, because it's good to look at what we're doing to take a step back. And I like that you elaborated on that because that's important for us to know. So back to that question, what has been one of your greater challenges in building your business and ideal life? And I add one more thing to that. If there was one thing that you could do differently now that you didn't know then, what would that thing be? I got the answer. I'm ready for this one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, this one it, for me revolves around finance, finances and educating myself around finances and managing money and managing cash flow and tracking things differently. So, I mean, I learned a lot of hard lessons from this. So, in personal and and in business finance. So I would delegate this. I've I delegated this to um, a couple different individuals in the company um, to run, let's say my CRM or my pipeline and different things. And I didn't have full responsibility over and full control. And then it mm-hmm. kind of went all haywire and crazy. And once I did a little bit of restructuring, took back the reins, you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Metaphorically, but also... <laughs> realistically, (laughs) on my sales teams and things like that, and went through it, comb through it, set parameters, set things up differently, you know what I mean? And created Mm -hmm. predictable cash flow and and more um, real inline numbers with with all of that. That's when I kind of gained that back. But that like, there's financial tracking, there's um, our accounting system, there's the pipeline, like I mentioned, sales pipeline, all those different things. I was honestly and quite frankly, scared of doing it because account, I didn't go to school for accounting, I'm not a CPA. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that stuff is scary. I, you know, and then I actually took the time to digest it in, in a way that worked for me mm-hmm. and created systems that work for me and um, also blocked out time so that I could do it. And now, honestly, Adrian, like this is going to sound super geeky and people are going like, oh my gosh, this Kylie girl. (laughs) But I look forward every month to doing my personal and business finances, like literally the the first Monday of the month. Like I'm so Mm -hmm. excited to sit down and track everything and see how everything's doing. You know what I mean? And make sure that we're on target for what we're, what we're projecting and all that stuff. So now it's, I'm excited for it. And I've also kind of switched my driving forces around of of what I wanted to do. So previously, it wasn't one of my highest priorities, you know what I mean? And that's Mm -hmm. why I wasn't doing it. That's why I was delegating it. When I kind of did a little bit more deeper internal work and realized, no, like wealth building and building my businesses is one of my core values and one Mm -hmm. of my driving forces that I really, really want to focus on. My actions changed, my thoughts changed around it. And now like I'm super in control of everything and and have plans and backup plans and you know what I mean plans if this happened plans if this happened plans if that happened I like so that I um yeah I love it now wow you know that's something that I feel too that you just mentioned really made me think about values and to go back to what a person's values are because I think that takes them out of alignment with their vision and speaking of that alignment 
why do you think people are not living their ideal life? So this is one of the first activities I do in my program for for vision planning, and I highly encourage everyone to do it. And I, okay. I mean, I have multiple tools to do it. And a lot of people think it's this overwhelming task. Oh my gosh, how do I even <laughs> know what's most important to me? How do I know my values? It can actually be really simple by asking the right questions. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Simple questions like, what do you what do you prioritize on a daily basis? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What actions are you prioritizing? Where are you the most reliable in your life? Where can mm-hmm. people know, like the people around you know that you're going to show up and execute for them. What's surrounding you in your environment? You know what I mean? Like you probably have a ton of bookcases similar to me, you know, and and you would know <laughs> that that learning and and progression and continual improvement is important to you. So there's a lot of things like when you're asked the right questions is actually it can actually be really simple of finding out what are your driving forces? What is the most important thing to you? And then you build off of that because people, like you said, a lot of people don't even know what their purpose is, don't know what their vision is, don't because they get scared and they let a lot of external factors influence what they think they should be doing or who they think they should be when really if they just took some time to evaluate themselves internally and listened to themselves and what resonates um, most with themselves, then you can pretty quickly put the pieces together and see what is most important to you. And to that point, when I do that exercise, so like I said, finances weren't my priority three, three, four years ago, you know, I wasn't taking those actions. But when I reevaluated like where my financial state was at. And then I'm like, wait a minute here. <laughs> we got to fix this. <laughs> I, I want to be here. Why is it like this? I knew it's because it wasn't my priority at that time. It wasn't one of my highest values at that time. So I restructured my thoughts around it. I shifted and that shifted my actions. You know what I mean? Which shifted my results and my reality. So all of that is different. So if you find whatever you find today, like you've got... I don't know, let's say your house is messy or, you know, like your environment isn't what you think you want or isn't your ideal version of yourself. You have the opportunity to shift that once you're aware of where you are right now. Yes. Powerful. This is great. Like right now I'm getting excited about looking back at my vision again and tweaking something. So you've got me pumped up, Kylie, and I hope that our audience is getting excited here because we're going to go on a short break. And when we come back, We're going to talk about vision planning. We'll be right back. (laughs) What if it were possible to get local fresh groceries delivered right to your front door? Just think how much time and stress it would save you. Well, Instacart gives you unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forget that one ingredient for the family dinner that could offset everything. Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as little as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area to help you save money, and every item is hand-selected by shoppers based on your preferences. No more rock-hard avocados, and they will keep your eggs safe too. To start your 14-day free trial, follow the link in the show notes to let Instacart know that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store again. Welcome back, everyone, to the Purposeful Live Show with your host, Adrian Starks, and our amazing guest, Kylie Paul. She really needs no introduction, but she is here. And this segment, we're going to talk about vision planning. To recap for you guys, we talked a lot about in the first segment, Kylie's journey, the power of purpose, clarity, intention, getting off that hamster wheel, stop the busy go, go, go mentality, and look at what you're actually doing. Now we're going to dive into the idea of vision planning. And Kylie, you talk about something very unique, the three domains to realize your vision. And I couldn't wait to ask this question. What are these three domains and how important is it to focus on them? So the three domains of your life are health, wealth, and love. So in, in the health domain is physical health, mental health, spiritual health. In the wealth domain, 
financial, vocational, and legacy. And then in the love domain, you have social, family, and fun. (laughs) And how important it is um, to take account of those three domains when you're creating the vision for your life is that is what is going to create a holistic life for yourself. So you don't want to create a vision that doesn't touch on all of those aspects because you're going to feel at some point, it might feel really good for a couple of years, let's say, but if you've (laughs) forgotten an element, you're going to realize that a couple of years down the road and still, um, feel a void, you know, and, and won't feel like your vision is complete and that you're executing a complete full life. I have to be honest with you. When you, when you brought up these three domains, you said health. I was like, okay, I'm doing good in that. I, you know, I exercise, take care of myself. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Wealth, I'm stepping up my game on that. I'm, I'm getting better, you know, and in my mindset and how I think and how business is flowing. You said love. I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, okay. So the love part, but I like how you broke the love part down into family. And then you said, what was it? Fun. And then there was another one. Social. Social. So the social aspect will come into many categories. And for our audience, I'm sure you guys will figure out what social part that you probably need to work on. But for me, I was like, okay, the love part, love department for me is not so good right now. However, I need to focus on what brings me joy because that's part of my love. And what brings me fun, right? So I like how you break these elements down, Kylie, because when we think of these three, we just automatically think of one certain thing that we've been conditioned to believe that that's what that represents. So thank you for that. Well, and you can think, yeah. So when I say love, probably everyone thinks automatically a romantic relationship. Like yes, you said already a couple times. Like I'm single. <laughs> like I'm, I'm actually, and I'm actually so am single I. Single <laughs> as of this recording. So holla, <laughs> but um. I'll put your your with information on. <laughs> yeah, but put my cell in here. But that doesn't but I still feel completely fulfilled in the love category right now because I have an incredible family life that I like spend time towards and put and my energy into my relationship with my parents and my kids. You know what I mean? Like that's a big part of my life. So yes. I feel completely fulfilled in that category. Social. I have an amazing small but amazing group of friends that I can rely on for different things. You know what I mean? And that support me in different ways. So in that area, I feel completely fulfilled. Fun. I mean, I schedule fun time and things that I want to do for me. You know what I mean? So I'm literally like it's Friday. I'm taking myself on a (laughs) a movie date tonight. I don't have any offers. So I'm just going to take myself (laughs) and and go on a (laughs) VIP movie to go see a VIP movie. You know what I mean? So that area, Mm -hmm. I also feel fulfilled because I, I've created that in my vision where I write down things that mean something to me and things that I actually want to do and execute that. And it took me a while to figure that out. And I had someone point that out to me once I kind of, I'm on a co-parenting schedule. So when I didn't have my boys, I didn't know what to do with myself. And someone asked me like, well, what do you want to do? And no one had Mm -hmm. ever asked me that before in my, like I'm 34 now, but whatever, in my 31 years at that point, no one had asked me what I wanted to do for for fun for myself. So I had to like actually (laughs) make (laughs) myself a list of things that I wanted to do in the year. You know what I mean? If that includes like spa days or mini trips or wine trips or whatever that is. I wrote it down and now I make sure that I'm doing those things to fulfill that fun element for myself. I love it. And taking out time for yourself is so important. That self-love perspective, I think, is what a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners, we tend to forget about because we're in the business of serving. So by default, we just get so used to serving everyone around us except for ourselves. And I'm glad that you take out time for yourself for that. And you know what? You're just like me. I go to VIP movies too, and there's no shame in my game. Yes, I do that by myself (laughs) and I have a good time. I'm oh, actually yeah. thinking about now what I want to go see. He's <laughs> <laughs> bringing you a drink while you're reclining. It's not bad. <laughs> it's great. You feel like you have the whole theater to yourself. So yeah, it, it works wonders. So let's get back to this idea of vision boards. We talked about these three pillars, but I want to talk about vision boards now because when someone thinks of creating a vision, a lot of the things out there in the market right now, people say, well, have you created a vision board? And I have done these before. But I've also realized that with vision boards, they change over time. 
Now, for the people listening who have not used a vision board or are curious about it, how does it work to use a vision board? What should they put on this thing? And how frequently should they be looking at it? Yeah, so I do a couple different things. The majority of my um, vision planning model is is actually in writing. So I have tools okay. and, and workbooks and things like that that kind of force people to write it down and look at different aspects of their life to make sure that they're touching on on one of those and, and to break it down that way. Now, I do like I have a vision binder. I have um, stuff on my board in front of my desk. You know what I mean? Reminders of things that I want to do. So and and on my phone, pictures and saved and images. But the the idea behind a vision board is that um, visual stimulation is the most powerful for your for your subconscious and getting that familiarity and your reprogramming of your mindset and your brain. And we won't get into quantum physics today, but I super geek out on that. As I mentioned, I am a scientist. I do geek. too. I love quantum <laughs> so physics. I love I love <laughs> that. But uh, we'll go we'll go surface level today. So. The idea behind vision boards is, is because it's visual and it's a very powerful message that you're sending to your brain of what you want. So mm -hmm. that's why people do it. Now, how often do you change it? Ideally, when you're creating a vision board, it's 10 year goals in mind. So, I mean, the only time you would be switching something out is when you've achieved it. You know what I mean? Or or on your way to to fulfilling that that goal of yours. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Actually, for me, I'm going to have to switch up my um, my binder because my dream car is in there and I'm actually picking it up any day now. So <laughs> I got oh. to switch that out by a new dream car <laughs> to put in there. <laughs> but ideally, they're, they're 10 year out goals, like big, big goals that you want to be working towards. Um, but a lot of my kind of vision planning is is writing writing things out and getting really clear with yourself, like we mentioned before what your top three driving forces are, and then create your vision with those in mind, because that's what's going to feel the best, you know, like you can feel the difference. So when I think about health goals, for example, how I kind of um, tell people to think about it is, is think of a health, health goal, close your eyes, and how do you feel about it, your body is going to tell you whether that's an actual real goal for yourself, if it's aligned with what you should be doing, or not. So if I think about like running a marathon, like I'm going to get like a facial reaction, like, like of disgust, you know, and you're going to know mm, Kylie's body is not aligned with that goal. We're not going to do that one. <laughs> but if I close my eyes and think about working out with my trainer or, or pushing myself physically in the gym with weights, I'll get a smile on my face and I'll like have a different um, body language reaction. And then I'll know, hey, this one is aligned with what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, <laughs> and that's what feels good for me. Now, it's not um, something that's uncomfortable, because all of your goals that are 10 years from now should feel uncomfortable. It's not about being uncomfortable or comfortable. It's about what is aligned with what your body knows that you can be doing. You know what I mean? So if I think about like deadlifting 300 pounds right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not at that stage, but my body's not going to react negatively to that like it did for running. You know, it's right. going to be it's going to be more motivational and be like, "No, we can't do that right now, but we could." You know, so <laughs> I love that. What can happen when a business owner or entrepreneur starts planning their ideal life using these three categories? Magic. Like Ooh. honestly, it's so okay. magical. One of my favorite things that I tell um, business owners and pretty much everyone to do is to journal, like just free journal a year ahead in those in your three domains of life. So just write out what your ideal life is one year from today. Make sure you touch on the th three domains. You put it out into the universe. You watch it come to fruition. You don't worry about it. So I do that all the time. And then I'll reread it, whatever it is, a year later, a couple years later, closer to the date that's actually on it, which was at the time a year ahead of time when I wrote it. And I'll read it to my employees and everything that I had written had come into fruition in a different way than I probably had thought it might. Uh, because mm. the how wasn't my <laughs> wasn't my responsibility, the what is my responsibility. Um, but that's kind of what I say, like the three the three steps to success is knowing what you want, knowing where you are, and then creating the plan to bridge that gap. Beautiful. Knowing what you want, knowing where you are, and creating the plan to bridge that gap. That is the quote of 
the show that I want to use. I always tell guests, I find something. I'm like, ah, that's the moment right there for me. Is it it's easier? True. It is true. And I like how you just said when I gave you that question, you were like, magic. <laughs> right there is all you need to our audience. Magic. When you do this, what Kylie is saying, do these three domains, focus on them, create that vision, write it out, look at it, get strategic about what you're actually doing. Stop just being busy, but being strategic about how you're acting toward things. Magic happens. Kylie, when someone's doing these three categories, is one easier than the other or does it just vary from person to person? So the idea behind it is finding one big goal for each domain that resonates with you and is aligned with you. You know what I mean? So if you create, like I said, if I created a health goal that was running a marathon, I'm not going to do that because it's not aligned. And then it wouldn't be easy for me to, you know what I mean? To, yeah. <laughs> to take the actions to, uh, to meet the milestones that I would need to get there because it's not easy. But once you get clarity on what is actually important to you and what your values are in that domain and create your goals and your vision around that, then it is easy. And you take automatic action. You know what I mean? Once you get really, really clear and you won't even notice it and you'll notice kind of after, whether that's 10 minutes after or an hour after or a day after, you're like, oh, I just did that automatically. And I didn't even really <laughs> think about it. Where What used to, I think was hard now that I've linked it to my purpose and finding what's important to me. So I also like, I do these exercises with my employees too, and have them write out their goals and then write out 20 reasons why that goal is important to them, what it allows them to do. So if it's a financial goal, what can you do with that money? Where is that going to go? Why is that important to you? You know, and and that really ingrains it and, and kind of weaves it deeper so that you have more meaning attached to it. Well said. Well, that's the end of the show, everyone. I'm just kidding. It's not the end <laughs> You said so much. Has been, <laughs> you know what? It's been so valuable what you've been saying. And it's like, I'm pretty sure for some people, they're making some adjustments starting today. And now that we've gotten into this idea of vision planning and really looking at things from that perspective of the three domains that you just so eloquently talked about, I want to get to know you a little bit more in your personal life. So you read one book a week. And this is when I was cringing when I read that bio. I was like, okay, I got to talk to you about this one. You read one book a week. And I love that leadership habit. And there's a saying that leaders are readers. And there's also a saying, I got to say this, that all readers are not leaders because it depends on what you are reading. And I also believe that leaders are educators. And in order to educate, we have to be on a consistent journey of educating ourselves, right? Because 100%. information changes every three to six months. What has been one of the books that has impacted your life? And what book are you currently reading? Great questions. Can I first say this one thing? So I always say like when I encourage other entrepreneurs to read more and invest in their own personal development, why I say that is I say my role as the CEO is to learn as much as I possibly can to be able to implement it in my business. The minute yes. that I stop learning and growing is when my business stops growing. So mm -hmm. the more that I grow personally, the more the business is going to grow. The more I Powerful. invest in myself to expand my knowledge and, and my awareness and all of that, the more I, the, the business gets investment, you know? So that's, it's equally important. And I encourage my employees to do that too. You know what I mean? So first of all, people that feel guilty for reading during working hours or whatever, that's investing in your business. You should be doing that. that as a business leader, as the owner, as the CEO, whatever your title is, that should be ingrained into your daily routine, no matter what. That is one of your the actions you should be taking as a business action. Like that is contributing to your business on a daily basis. Um, what was your question? My top my top books and yeah, what, what I book, what book has them? yeah, what book has impacted your life and what book are you currently reading? Can I give you my top five? I would love that top five. Let's hear it. <laughs> I also have a top one hundred Kylie's top one hundred book downloads because I think over the last six or seven years, I've read close to 400. But this is my top 100 as of right now. But my number one um, book of all time is The Magic of Believing by Claude Bristol, which I don't even know how many yes. times I've read it, to be honest. 
Like I couldn't even tell you. Um, and I've listened to it on Audible. I probably broke an Audible reading, <laughs> listening to it so many times because I can listen to it. I think I've listened to it putting myself to sleep before on planes and trains and automobiles while I'm traveling all over the place. I listen to it all the time. So that's my number one book as a just constant reminder of the power of vision and deciding what you want and how it can come into into your reality. I've got Think and Grow Rich on my top five, obviously. Um, Great by Choice by Jim Collins is amazing. I implement a lot of those leadership strategies into my quarterly strategic planning and daily operational planning, honestly, in my businesses. Uh, Happy Pocket Full of Money is incredibly powerful. I've read it twice this year and I'm reading it again in November. Um, every time like I read it, I get something new out of it and my mm-hmm. finances change like immediately. Like it's crazy. That book is amazing. Um, what's my last one? Oh, Relentless by uh, Tim Grover. I just, I love that book. Also warning, that book always needs a warning. Like that's not a level one book. That's at least a level three to five book. <laughs> so don't be don't be discouraged if you're not at that at that point yet. <laughs> um, totally fine, but um, yeah, that's that's my top five. I'm currently reading "Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself" um, by, by Joe Dispenza. Yeah, yeah, I read that one. Good one. And I've got "I'll Teach You to Be Rich" on my Audible right now. I've got a whole bunch on there, but those are my active ones. And then I'm reading. Uh, what's the next one by um if you've read traction i'm reading the next one in that series which also was super amazing by gino wickman but, great um, list thanks sorry i'm just like rolling off because i like clearly you can tell i'm passionate about <laughs> learning that's why reading. i wanted to ask the question because <laughs> i believe that reading is such it's the foundation to our growth in the realm of business and in personal life. I mean, we're reading things that basically people are putting out here for us that can help us navigate through something that we have a challenge with at this point in time. And a lot of people don't take advantage of that. I think one of the people that really inspired me, well, a few actually, Earl Nightingale, he talked a lot about reading. Uh, his book called The Strangest Secret has been one of my top 10 forever. Jim Rohn also inspired me about the power of reading and journaling and visioning. Uh, and, and visioning. And also right now, currently, I am reading Ryan Holiday, The Ego is the Enemy, which is a very good Ooh. one. Now so I've that's got two my, to add to my list. You look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's in my audio book list. That's in my audio book playing right now. And currently, I'm reading a book by Og Mandino, which is one of my favorite authors, called The Choice. Ooh, see, I'm writing these down and you'll have to send them to me after too. I'll send them to you afterwards. Yeah. So the love of reading is- I'm flying, traveling again soon. So I need to stock up on my- Audible. Yeah. <laughs> See, when I travel, I have my Kindle with me. I have my audio book. I have actually physical books. So I'm like the nerd for books. Like you catch me, I will always have books on me. There is oh, not a day, for me. <laughs> a day in my, my life I don't have it. My planner, like I might as well not have a right arm if I don't have my planner with me. <laughs> like, I about, love that. Yeah, I'm super nerdy like that. <laughs> I love it. You know, and I respect your energy and drive and especially to help build others. And I also know that a couple of building blocks in your life are your two adorable little boys. And I just want to ask, what are their names? And what is one thing that you really enjoy doing with them? So my boys are Cade and Niall. Okay. And I mean, I enjoy whatever they want to do with me. Like I I like experiencing new things with them. So taking them to downtown Toronto for the first time and and watching them experience it, love that. And watching how they take in the city and take in different things, like that is the best thing as a parent, getting to re-experience something through their eyes. So yeah. that's my favorite thing to to do with them is just taking them on a new adventure (laughs) and watching them experience it i love that because i brought that up because we have to remind the audience that you're running three businesses but you're also a mother of two and that this is no excuse for anyone out here right now to say that they don't have enough time and i hear this a lot with people i don't have enough time well i think kylie has something to say about that (laughs) (laughs) And I think she can help you with that because she specializes in time management. So I think it's important that 
that you also have a life of your own because I love bringing people on to talk about what they do for other people. But at the end of the day, we're human. And for people to connect with us and to really see that, oh, I can do that too. I can, I can become this. They have to know that at the end of the day, we all have our personal lives and it's okay to have fun. It's okay to have love that, as you mentioned before, in those three main pillars of the vision planning. A hundred percent. And and I just want people to know, like, they probably think, oh my gosh, she has two kids and three businesses. She probably works till midnight every night and blah, blah, blah. Today's Friday. I literally have the rest of the afternoon off. I, I told you, like, I'm taking myself to a movie later. I rarely, <laughs> like, honestly, I rarely work past three, especially on the weeks that I have my boys. Like, there is, I pick my boys up from school. I take them to school. I go to their activities, their soccer games and all of that. Like that is scheduled into my my week. So nothing kind of will get in the, the way of that for me. And the difference between me and I think a lot of other people that like is how effective I am during my working hours or during my productivity time or during my focus time, whatever you want to call it, is how much I actually get done during that time because I schedule something fun on the other side of it to look Mm -hmm. forward to, which is the missing link that I think that people don't have. If you incentivize yourself, which is something, another concept in the power of fun. I don't know if you've read that one, but that one's, I like that one. I'll put that on my list. schedule something on the other side of it, you're going to be way more productive and effective (laughs) by (laughs) incentivizing yourself to get done so that you can do X, Y, Z. And even for me, if that's just like laying around this afternoon, because obviously I don't get to do that a lot when I have my boys, but on certain days, you know, like I, I'm not working 24 seven. I work on weekends when I don't have my boys. Yes, but it doesn't feel like work for me. Like I love doing it. I'm creating, I'm doing programs, I'm creating workbooks for people that are going to help them gain more control back into their lives. So for me, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to wake up tomorrow morning and be like, Oh, I got to work today. I'm excited to like do the things that are on my list to do. You know, the things that I go blah about are like, cutting the lawn and cooking dinner (laughs) and, you know, those kind of uh, daily chores. But for me, my work is my life. My businesses are my life. They're so intertwined. And it's because I see the big vision of it. I love it. Kylie, how can our audience get in contact with you to start planning and creating their ideal life through vision planning or to learn about any events or opportunities to possibly work with you? Absolutely. So my website is KyliePaul.com. I'm on Facebook under Kylie Paul. And my company for this is Coaching with Kylie. Also LinkedIn. I'm extremely active on LinkedIn. Kylie Paul and Coaching with Kylie on there. And my email address is CoachingWithKylie at gmail.com. I post um, all of my like free workshops on the Facebook page. So if you guys are interested in that, and I also have a couple free downloads that are posted again on the on the Facebook page. So my top 100 books that I mentioned before is posted on the Facebook page. I'm doing an event next week that it's going to be Mindset Reset. So there'll be a mindset workbook that will be a downloadable item. And then I also have a third 30-day Activate Awareness journal, which is, uh, if I do say so myself, pretty powerful. So. <laughs> Kylie, you are pretty powerful, and I loved having you on the show today. You've provided so much value to our audience on vision planning, clarity, and purpose, and I'm just excited for what's going to come next for the audience working with you and even for people that are learning more about what you're doing out here in the world. Thank you so much for your time. You're absolutely wonderful, and you are the vision planning queen. I love it. Yeah, I like that. Thank you so much. (laughs) You're very welcome, and thank you for being on the show, Kylie. No problem. Anytime. Thank you for listening to the Purposeful Life Show on the Connect Now podcast with your host, Adrian Starks. Subscribe to the show and connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. Learn more about us by visiting our website at cnbn.ca. Go to connectnowpodcast.com to be inspired by more life-changing content. Let's connect, learn, and grow.